Sometimes when we encounter a word, something that is unfamiliar, we usually look for its correct pronunciation. Well, you're not alone. We all do. And when we do that, we of course have to consider the stress placement of the word, its rhythm, and the intonation patterns. Now, when we feed our curiosity by searching for these words and we review their pronunciation, then we are working with a what we call supersegmental level of phonology. But take note that a reading of words starts with having a phonological awareness of the alphabet or having an awareness with the sounding units of the phonemes, the sounds of the vowels and consonants, for example. In our English language, we only have 26 letters, but when it comes to the unique sounds of the phonemes, there are actually more than that. That is why for today, I would like to introduce to you the Vitor Triangle. It is where we can discover or make us recall the rest of the other unique sounds of the phonemes, aside from the sounds that we commonly know. This picture is what we call the Vitor Triangle. If you will observe, there are symbols here. We call it the IPA or the International Phonetic Alphabet. The purpose of the IPA is it provides us the unique symbol for each distinctive sound in a language. So again, every sound in a language has its own distinct symbol. But how are sounds articulated in the Vitor Triangle? The Vitor Triangle is actually divided into three groups of articulation based on the movements of our tongue and jaw. So the two move with each other. They move together. Here on the left side, for example, as you articulate the sounds going down toward the center, your jaw opens more. So it opens your mouth. Let's try to find out later how. Now, when your mouth is more open, your tongue is kind of like moving backward. On the other hand, when your mouth is more closed, your tongue becomes lower or more like moving forward. Let's try to do that by examining the different symbols and how to articulate them. Let's start here from the left and observe how the movements of our tongue and jaw correspond for each other. First is the long E sound. So how do we articulate that? This is made by extending your lips to either side of your face, kind of like you're giving a fake smile, more like showing your teeth. Then, make a small opening between your upper and lower lips and your teeth. So it's E, E. As you can see, there is a small opening there. Okay, anyway, we have our own ways or different perfect shapes of lips when articulating sounds. All right, then as we articulate the sound of the long E, okay, make it a little longer by counting two beats. So let's say, eat, peak, seen, teen, heat. That's the long E sound. As you can feel it, your jaw seems like freezing as you articulate the sound because you need to stay a little longer in two seconds or two beats. Next, the short E sound. So it almost has the same way of articulation with the long E, but this one is shorter. Now make a small opening of your mouth and move your lips slightly sideways. So for one beat, say E. Sit, read, lid. That's a short E sound. Third, the long A sound. In doing this, make your lips moving sideways and your mouth slightly wider than the long E sound that we did a while ago. So for example, it's A, A. As you can see, it's a little wider than the long E sound, right? A, E. So can you see the difference? Then, keeping the same lips position, make your mouth a little smaller by closing it slightly. So when you say A, you widen your mouth and you you make it you make it smaller by closing it slightly. A, A. So that's the long A sound. Next is the sound of A, A. 
This sound is made with your lips in a slight grimace and your mouth is open wider than in A. Set, let, met. Next, the sound of eh. Eh. For others, this one is quite confusing and a bit tricky to do. So let's find out why. First, it starts with the short E sound position plus add a bit of the sound of eh. Eh. At the end of it. So how is that? Short E sound plus a bit of the sound of eh. At it on its end. Right? So, uh, it's like the middle of your tongue is trying to reach your palate and slowly goes down. Eh, eh. Okay, so everybody say, sat, lap, map, banana, map, lap, sat. The sound of ah. Uh. This is the most common sound in American English and it's ubiquitous, which means you'll find it everywhere. So now, open your mouth very slightly, then grunt like someone has pushed you gently. But, stunt, not. The sound of uh, uh. Another grunt sound. This is extremely similar with the schwa sound, the only difference being it is stressed. Cup bug rug cup bug rug cup bug rug the sound of normal a ah normal a how to do it just drop your jaw and you're all set pot got not pot got not the long O sound. This one has the same position like the end of the long O sound. O, 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 O. Only make the sound for a shorter amount of time and sustain the sound for two beats. Goo, flu, moo. Goo, flu, moo. The short O sound. In this one, keep it short and sweet. Book, foot, pull. Book, foot, pull. The long O sound. In this one, gently round your lips from big to small until your lips are puckered like you're kissing somebody. Then sustain for at least two beats. Go, flow, mo. Go, flow, mo. So that's the long O sound. The sound of ah, ah. In doing this, open your mouth wide as in the sound of ah, but gently round your lips like the sound of oh. Okay? Saw, flaw, raw. Saw, flaw, Raw.